AI is reshaping every industry, and healthcare is no exception. We've got this increasing administrative load in healthcare combined with workforce shortages, and it's a growing concern. What are some practical and tangible ways that AI can alleviate these burdens and enhance operational efficiency? And how do we balance technology with that important human element of healthcare to benefit both patients and clinicians? With me today is Melvin Chen, co-founder and chief commercial officer at Key Reply. And in this episode, we talk about the transition of AI from intent-based systems to generative AI and its influence on healthcare productivity. Practical examples from Singapore hospitals demonstrating AI's role in streamlining healthcare operations. And we learn about Key Reply's expansion into the Australian healthcare market and its potential impact on emergency departments and beyond. Collaboration starts with the conversation team, Health Tech. Let's make it happen. Welcome to Talking Health Tech, featuring content and community about technology and healthcare. We acknowledge the traditional owners of lands these conversations were recorded and pay respect to elders past and present. Hi there, I'm Melvin Chen. I'm co-founder and chief commercial officer of Key Reply, uh, which is a healthcare AI operating system for the modern hospital and clinic. Um, I'm really glad to be here in Sydney. Yeah, Melvin, where, where are you from originally? I was born in uh, Chengdu, China, but then I grew up in the UK. And subsequently, I lived in China and lived in the Middle East and Dubai and yeah. the US and New York and uh, yeah, almost, almost everywhere. Now I'm based out of Singapore. Yeah, based in Singapore. Oh, interesting. So you're you're based in Singapore with Key Reply. What's going on in Singapore with Key Reply? Yeah, so Key Reply has been operating in healthcare for the last seven years, uh, largely in public healthcare and in the public hospital space there. Mm-hmm. So we're now in two thirds of the pub- public healthcare system. So that's more than twenty hospitals in, in Singapore where we provide AI solutions for that the hos- hospital systems. So the likes of Sing Health uh, as a cluster and also the National Healthcare Group. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's been an incredible uh, journey. Uh, I, I joined Key Reply uh, uh, last year, but it's been a real leader in the AI space for hospitals in, in, uh, for the last seven years. Oh, interesting. And so, you know, no strangers to AI these days and the impact it's having on healthcare. And we'll dive into some of those more modern applications of it. I'm interested, you say, you know, been been um, focusing on the AI space in hospitals for the last seven years, but I guess AI seven years ago compared to what AI is today is a little bit different. So like, what, what's the actual kind of core practical use cases of, of AI in, in the hospital setting, particularly in the, the early days? Yeah, it's, it's completely changed since the onset of uh, with ChatGPT. Mm. We, we had a step function with GBD technology that has gone from more of a intent-based, the machine learning type of AI to generative AI. So that, that's a m- massive shift that's happened at the end of 2022. So now what's possible is, is I would say, 10x what, is, what was possible before when Key Reply started. But it's always been along the lines of how do we improve the productivity and efficiency in, a, in a, the modern hospital? Uh, or, or on modern clinic. So it, it's really along the lines of, hey, how do we do patient engagement from pre-appointment, during appointment, post-appointment, tackling issues such as appointment booking, which is a big bottleneck, mm. to uh, how do we, when they arrive at the hospital, then post, how do we follow up with proms and prems? Uh, and then how do we reactivate and, and, and figure out, do they have other issues? When do they need to come back to the clinic or the hospital? So that's the patient-facing. But also increasingly, we're doing... Uh, clinician facing how do we uh, solve things like rostering how do we solve the things like incident management how do we oper- how do we help operate a modern hospital where you're moving things around and you have to communicate with your porters uh, uh, so it's both patient facing and uh, clinician facing but really more on the operational productivity hmm. uh, less so uh, we don't really touch the real clinical where it's diagnosed not yeah. sticks or it's more yeah. the productivity and so on the, on the productivity side, obviously, then the problem to solve is that, you know, in healthcare, there's a lot of administrative burden that puts a lot of pressure on individuals. And here in Australia, um, staff shortage is a regular thing, particularly from the clinician side. But I, I also know that globally, that's a big impact as well. Is that where we're really trying to address is that allowing people to do more with less? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a, 
healthcare is one of the industries where it's very inflationary. So typically you see a lot of industries, especially technology, which are deflationary, uh, where technology costs keep coming down and the cost mm. of products, say Netflix, goes, keeps going down. But in, in healthcare, a couple of industries uh, I've operated in, in healthcare and also real estate, which I've also been in in the past, they're very inflationary. So costs keep increasing. Uh, mm. And that's also, you see that in the public sector. So and the reason for this is because you always have this shortage of workforce uh, to meet the demand. The demand is always increasing, but your ability to hire trained professionals to do all the laborious work is, is always a challenge. So there, that's where inf- technology needs to come in to uh, reduce the, this ever so mm. increase in, in prices and, and, and try and stem that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The seagulls agree. The um, <laughs> but then uh, and I guess as well, where where as as that continues to evolve and things get more complex in healthcare too, there's additional reporting requirements, regulatory requirements. So I can see how leaning into artificial intelligence in Australia would would make a lot of sense in the healthcare side. I'm keen to learn a little bit more about Singapore in particular, just because we're not really talked too much about about healthcare in Singapore, and given that's. That's where you're from and where Key Reply's kind of been making an impact. What is the healthcare system like in Singapore and maybe compared to the Australian market? Yeah, I, I see s- similar problems in Singapore. You still see uh, labour shortage, when you, especially with regard to things like the front desks or the call centres. Mm. The ability to hire uh, people that uh, that can do those tasks. There's, there's always people leaving the system and retiring and getting people in. Uh, that are trained sufficiently, they're excited to do the job that is oftentimes quite laborious. Booking appointments, rescheduling appointments, that's a major one. Uh, mm. That's a that's a bit of a bottleneck. Uh, if you're dealing with, say, in the emergency department, you're always getting too many calls in where a lot of the calls, um, they, they don't, they're not really emergencies. And how do you deal with that? Uh, so it's, it's a lot of the same problems regarding workforce. Uh, the, the way that the, the Singapore system is set up is it's set up into three clusters of, uh, of hospitals and, uh, and, and GP practices. As, uh, so Sing Health, one of them we work with, and the National Healthcare Group. So it, I do see a lot of parallels. I think the one difference is that the labor costs in, in Australia are even higher. Mm. So our ability to, uh, to, to add value here is even more because of the, high, the higher labor costs here. Yeah. Interesting. You mentioned uh, working with Sin Health, Sing Health, yep, uh, and and a couple of others. Talk me through some of those like use cases, the customers you're working with in Singapore, and the problems you're solving there. Yeah, absolutely. So with Sing Health Group is is a bit of journey. We started in uh, 2019 with the first use case at KKH Hospital, uh, where they had. A pop- and sorry, sorry, is Sing Health the, the the national healthcare system, or is it? A- it's one of the clusters. Ah, so that there's yeah. uh, there's three clusters, and we work yeah, with yeah. two of them. Right, right, uh, right. the two largest ones, Sing, Sing Health being the largest. Mm, mm. Uh, and they, they they each have uh, something like 15 hospitals and and, and GP practices and whatnot. Mm. Uh, so with Sing Health, we started with one uh, hospital where they were trying to. Uh, solve a problem with too many people coming to try and ask for their financial counseling or uh, ask financial questions. And they only had service desks, which were a huge bottleneck when there's a flood of people coming. At other times, they would just be relatively quiet. So what we did was we came in with, at that time, it was more like a virtual assistant or chat bot mm-hmm. uh, in the, the previous terminology. Now we're yeah. moving towards more of a, a co-pilot terminology for it, where we would, that would be the initial... Uh, uh, channel where they would come and ask those questions and we would respond basically respond via a digital channel via whatsapp and other channels or a web widget that they would uh, that we could answer the majority of the questions and so that reduced that reduced the need for um the but we basically wiped out the need for having these these service desks yeah. and it became a fully uh, automated system uh, just people in uh, re- responding uh, without the desks, yeah, and uh, there we scaled up to uh, I think now more than ten deployments within in Sing Health Group across different hospitals, uh, and really, uh, essentially, we we increased the productivity of uh, by about twenty x because we reduced the need for people by about five uh, x, and mm. then we increased the productivity or the satisfaction and throughput by about four x. So on, on Agro, we it's a productivity increase of twenty x. Interesting. And you, you mentioned, you know, people are engaging with the platform. It sounds like it's um, both the patients would engage with the platform, but also on the other side as well, from the 
the staff's side. So you know, being able to balance the expectation of both, you know, the functionality and the practicality is important on the on the user side, but also then you, you've got to have a slick user experience for the patient as well. So I guess that that spe- like speaks to your point around integrating in with like WhatsApp and stuff. Is that am I kind of on the right path? Here? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So the other. Uh, system level uh, case study we have is with the national healthcare group and there uh, uh, we we really transformed the call center uh, operations uh, by uh, which is usually way you know most of most of the inquiries you get is around appointments and so there we put in the system that uh, that essentially again reduced the, the number of the, the need for, to increase headcount as they scaled up mm. uh, and improve the sat- customer satisfaction. A, lo- a lot of it is more uh, on the patient-facing side, but increasingly we're seeing also more uh, need to improve the operations from a, um, how do you communicate with your clinicians or, or your operational staff, uh, for example, porters. So in Melbourne, one of the hospitals, we're looking, we're partnering with a company that does uh, that there's location tracking of assets, mm. and there we're able to use our system to so the porters can talk to our system and ask where you know a certain bed is that they need to go and get, mm. uh, and it's it's all natural language. There's no clunky uh, system where you have to go in log in or that before you have to page your porters. Now you can talk into a system, and mm. and it is smart enough to be able to uh, tell you where, where to go and navigate your right way around the hospital all in all in real time. Mm. Are you seeing that as the trend in how people will want to engage with technology? Because this conversation base is pretty hot right now and it is innovative and new. And in theory, it sounds like something that we'd all, like we can all speak to each other as humans. So why wouldn't we want to speak to our technology like a human as well? Sometimes there's a lot gets kind of lost in translation through that process and there's you know, a, a, a big cultural piece as well. I'm interested because you've got a bit of that global um, experience as well. Like, are you seeing that actually being something that people want or is it like a, a fancy new kind of trend that will, will fade away? <laughs> uh, no, uh, absolutely. I think the biggest shift that we've seen moving from the machine learning AI to generative AI is 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 this one where it's much more humanistic. Yeah. So there's two things. One is the inference capability it's able to understand you like a human. You talk to it in natural language and it understands you. The second thing is able to retrieve something from a knowledge base or they almost uh, process what you've said and come back with an answer. But it comes back with an answer not in a robotic way, mm-hmm. in a very human way. Uh, that's, almost, that's almost like if someone's talking to you, you can, you can, and you can ask it for more clarification. It's like interacting with a human. And I think that's the biggest shift. And and it, what we've seen is that people love that. Mm. People don't want to work, work with a computer or a system. They want to work with uh, and, and interface with something that's more like a human. Well, again, I guess that's there's an extra, uh, I guess, cultural implementation challenge that everyone dealing with with this conversational AI piece is going to face because, you know, we've all called our bank a few years ago and, and it says, you know, say your number and it doesn't understand what you mean, you know, and we've got a wallet talking to a, I just want to talk to a human and because this this computer is not understanding what I mean but that that technology is very different to what we're talking about here that's just putting you into a particular bucket whereas this is something that's engaging with you and, and understands that nuance and um, and complexity so I, I can see how that's um, of interest you know you've you've talked about uh, you've touched on working with uh, some clients in Melbourne and some some early stages here and we're here in Sydney today and I've seen you at, at events around too so what and and we've already talked about how in Australia the cost of the administrative burden is high. Tell me more about this journey into Australia and, and what you're hoping to achieve there. Yeah, I think there's huge problems that we see in in in, in emergency departments in Australia and hospitals. When I speak with the uh, CIOs there, um, and that's what a lot of it's around workforce. So what we're bringing here is what we've done in Singapore, uh, and we think it's going to be even more impactful because of the higher cost. Uh, of labor the uh, the workforce issues so it's, it, I think it's more of the same how do we uh, make workforces more productive uh, and how, how do we uh, provide a better healthcare system that's more accessible uh, and, and more efficient so people can get care more efficiently and quicker yeah. uh, and reduce costs mm. so it, I think it's it's in this period of time it's it's hey how do we get spread the word and get the more use cases um I think a lot of people think it's 
risky or it's uh, I think we our, our job might see my job is to sort of demystify because I think people don't fully understand the the power of the, this technology we, ha- we have now uh, and it's uh, people think it's a little bit risky or people think it's very expensive but we're here to demystify that and mm-hmm. and um, so we're actually doing a campaign that is going to get people to early impact with generative AI but also set them on the path to that journey over so with this 222 campaign two two weeks two months and two years to set a long-term strategy uh, and so that's what we've been doing in seeing one we hope to bring that to australia the uk the us and the rest of the world mm. i've seen that as a bit of a strategy too of uh, and that makes sense to me is in something new and emerging and something that it's difficult to conceptualize how that might apply in practice the best way is to to test it out i guess and th- and that's where having that entry in and then realizing the potential sometimes you don't know until you've actually kind of engaged with the thing and go okay this this is transformational so that's that seems worthwhile and i've seen you in our you know tht plus member meetups and out at events and, in, and connecting with a lot of different people in the space as you should when you know coming into a uh, a new market what kind of conversations are you prioritizing like the different so many different stakeholders you could speak with in healthcare um who are you hoping to most speak to when you're in town and then also uh when you're back in the the office i was split into two major groups one is public and private hospitals which is the mainstay that's the vast majority of our work in singapore Uh, but now increasingly we're getting more inquiries from uh clinic chains from also telehealth from mental health and so the more digital native uh there they're also experiencing the same is that uh with customer support customer service how do we uh, how do we solve for that reduced cost? But also, how do we engage the patient, the customer, better, uh, as, and follow them through, build up, the, up that holistic picture, mm. so that we can provide more value, activate post treatment, and maximize the value and maximize revenue ultimately for these these groups. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's important to bridging that state and federal divide here in Australia of clinics being run and uh, all funded. Uh, nationally and, and states kind of doing their thing too. And that's something we always talk about um, across the ecosystem is that for, from an end user patient perspective, you want to be able to follow your data all the way through. So I can see how providing similar services would also be uh, important as well. And then thinking about, you know, what the what to look forward from seeing from key reply, no doubt we'll see more presence in Australia and, and engagement with the uh, stakeholders. But in terms of innovations and new things you're working on, you mentioned the campaign, but what else is kind of in the works that we can look forward to seeing? Pete, every week we're getting new, uh, we're riding on the shoulders of giants, uh, being the big companies like OpenAI, mm. uh, Google, Meta, they're, they're building these foundation models, which every week, every month, there's, they're increasing uh, their, in, their, in their power. Mm. And so recently we just came up uh, with a voice uh, capability, which is essentially like talking to a human. I, I, I do a demo, uh, which I, I did in, in Thailand in a conference uh, last week, and people were just mm. shocked because it was the first Gen AI voice demo doing customer support for hospitals. And people people weren't really, it just, people were blown away. And mm. I was rewarded by like seven or eight CEOs straight away because <laughs> people haven't really seen how natural and how powerful it is. And so voice is, is well and truly here. And the next thing is, I think, video. Uh, so jet, uh, with uh, GPT-5, that's going to, that's going I'm, to, I'm just waiting for that. Yeah. That's going to be transformative again. Yeah, we won't even need you and me standing here to yeah. do it. We'll just use the AI piece. But look, there's probably something symbolic about the sun coming out over a doomy kind of start to the uh, conversation that we had because the future is definitely bright. Look, but Melvin, we'll put the details for our key reply in the show notes of this episode and obviously check out our presence on the Talking Health Tech website and look forward to uh, seeing what comes with your time here in Australia. Thank you so much. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Talking Health Tech. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this episode with someone who might find it valuable. For more information and resources about healthcare innovation, visit TalkingHealthTech.com.